We're gonna pull up and talk about the 38 CFR so you know what the VA is looking for. Whiskey 9, Yankee 7 November, golf, over. You will hear veterans all across the internet giving advice about the VA, but more than likely, it's not based in the 38 CFR. The 38 CFR is how the VA makes decisions. The VA, believe it or not, does not make feeling-based decisions. Now, CMP examiners, that's a whole other ballgame. When it comes to the VA Raiders decision, that decision will be rooted and grounded in 38 CFR. So what the heck is 38 CFR? I have Microsoft Edge open. Go ahead and type up 38 CFR. Let's look at mental health, for example. When it comes to the links, you're gonna see ecfr.gov. That's the one you want. If you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see all these law firms. Um, don't worry about them. Just click on the ecfr.gov. And here we go. We have Code of Federal Regulations, Title 38, and we clicked on Mental Disorders. Now we're gonna go through Mental Disorders. We're gonna backtrack a bit to actually explain how the 38 CFR is configured. And then we are gonna look at a few more disabilities. So looking at Mental Health, we have all of these disabilities with uh, codes. These are rating codes, 9208 for delusional disorder. If you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see exactly how the VA rates mental health. This is a huge tool for you. If I was going into a CNP exam for mental health, the very first thing I would do is open up the 38 CFR and really understand, hey, how does the VA rate mental health? And once I read it, I would be like, hey, I feel like I fall into the 70% category. I'm gonna read this. It's gonna help me understand what the heck is going on within my mind, within my body. It's gonna help you also articulate to the CMP examiner exactly what's happening. So this is 4.130 schedule of ratings for mental disorders. Let's go back to 38 CFR. This is the big picture 38 CFR. Now, before we jump into this, I'm not telling you to read the entire thing. That would be insane. That would probably cause you to have more disabilities anyways. Um, but I just want to show you how it's sectioned out. So 38 CFR, chapter one is Department of VA. That's where we fall at. And you have all these subparts, right? So you have part four, schedule ratings. That's where we were at. You have... Um, administrative procedures, delegation of authorities, adjudication, all these parts of the 38 CFR. That's how the 38 CFR is kind of sectioned into. Clicking on part four, you have subpart B, disability ratings, all right. Functional loss, history of injury, all of this stuff. So that's how the 38 CFR is kind of formatted and laid out. I do think it is a bit confusing. Um, but what really matters is whatever it is that you are going up for an exam for, let's say it's for tinnitus. 38 CFR for tinnitus. You're looking at ecfr.gov. Scroll down, and now you're looking at diseases of the ear. Here's everything you can claim within your ears. Talking about um, dizziness and occasional sta staggering, how that's rated, how hearing impairment is rated, the loss of both, loss of one. Scroll down here a bit, you'll see tinnitus. Here we go, code 6260. Tinnitus, recurrent, that's a 10% rating. If you're claiming back pain or neck pain or anything with your joints, just go ahead and type up 38 CFR, back pain. Now this one is gonna be huge because it's the entire musculoskeleton um, structure but let's go ahead and check it out let's look, look it up and again functional loss all of this stuff I'm gonna keep I'm gonna scroll way down here so you can see range of motion for the shoulder range of motion for the elbow the wrist scrolling all the way down here's some rating tables on various disabilities somewhere down here is the thoracolumbar there's your hand your foot Where's your neck and your thoracolumbar? Here we go. Here's flexion of the neck, the cervical spine. Here's a thoracolumbar spine, range of motion. 
your flexion, extension, your lateral flexion, and your rotation. This is how the VA makes decisions. If you're ever curious as to why you rate the percentage that you received, go ahead and read the 38 CFR for that specific rating. If you feel like you rate a higher percentage, then you need to go ahead and get the medical evidence for that and submit for an increase. That's how veterans know if you rate an increase or not. When you get mailed a decision letter for denial or an approval, that decision packet has listed a 38 CFR code. If it's a denial, the VA is literally telling you, hey, if you want this approved, get this fixed. They are giving you the answer. Sometimes it's a gruesome process. I get that, especially when you're talking about appeals. If you receive a denial, go ahead and look at that 38 CFR code and combat that directly with the supplemental claim. So get out your reading glasses, look up 38 CFR, and whatever it is that you want to claim as a disability, you need to understand how the VA rates that disability.